Okay, and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this later. For our next deck, which is going to be a donation deck, which is Orzov Afterlife. So this deck is, of course, built on the uh, mechanic Afterlife. So we have um, cards like Imperious Oligarch, Orzov Enforcer, Tithe Taker, Ministrant of Obligation, all cards with Afterlife. Um, and then we have Tesa. We have four Tesas that whenever the <clears throat> whenever a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger that ability triggers an additional time. So every single afterlife uh, trigger that we have um, that that's going to happen, you know, trigger twice. We also have like Priest of the Forgotten Gods, which this is an ability that that. Wait, that one won't happen an additional time, right? No, because that's a creature dying causing a triggered ability. So no, this one won't happen additional times. But Midnight Reaper would. So if we have Tesa and, and Midnight Reaper in, each creature dying draws us two cards and so on. We have Alenda, uh, which is a pretty sweet card to, um, to have with this as well. Uh, so every creature that dies puts two 1-1 one -one counters on Alenda when you have Tesa out. Um, Seraph is another creature with afterlife. And then we also have Vindictive Vampire. And Tesa will double the Vindictive Vampire triggers as well. Um, uh, no, the, the donator did not elab elaborate on why there's no like play crafter or gruesome menagerie. I mean, for the most part, this is like, you know, lots of fours and everything. Gruesome menagerie, of course, you need a one, a two, and a three drop in your graveyard. There's lots of two drops in here, but as you can tell, there's zero one mana cards, and we have eight uh, threes. But so you'd have to play a lot of one drops as well for gruesome and menagerie. The great curry worst. Your sub wasn't shown. Uh, try try hitting the refresh button. Uh, great curry worst. Uh, try to refresh your stream or here. Oh, it's right here. I I I can show it. So yeah, I don't know why the alert didn't pop up, but I can get the alert. There we go. I can manually put it up there. Awesome. Thank you so much for that sub there. The Great Currywurst. And that's sub number 20. So that means we'll be cracking open a pack here before we get to these games. There we go. Perfect. Um... The thing I'm, I don't, I don't really like final payment. Basically, I don't, I don't like this card very much. I think the cast down is probably just fine, or just even playing mortifies with all these two drops. I think you can play some mortifies. But honestly, maybe like actually just being able to have a sacrifice outlet for something like a Lenda, or to like trigger some Tesas or something, maybe that could actually be good. So you know, I'm I'm definitely fine with uh, trying them out. Um, because this is like the, the kind of deck where I think you can play final payment shadow 5151. Welcome to the stream as well. Thanks for the sub. Hope you're having a good time. Um, oh, you're welcome Lords. All right. So we're, we're cracking open a pack here. So let's crack open our Ravnica Legions pack. Can we get a mythic? Mythic, mythic. Ooh, it's not 20 gems. It's a mythic. Captive audience. Nice. Good pack, good pack. All right, Orzov Afterlife. Let's get to some games. Just finished a constructed run with Gruel midrange and went seven and two. Good job, Clem. Way to go. Yeah, the the deck builder screen you can't really read the the records and stuff, but it should be good on the other screens. Uh, Grix's control was one and two. All right, like this one. Salvatas. 
get in on that action as well. Welcome, Salvatas. Sub number 22. Alright, let's get the Priest of Forgotten Gods. Alright, it says, thanks for the awesome Kato. You're welcome. Get that up here. Let's get that just kind of ready to go. Um, this looks to be Drake's. The problem with Drake's is, you know, they usually play a whole lot of shocks. And uh, Priest of the Forgotten Gods, not good against shock. But it is very good if they do not kill the priest. Your favorite guild, Or Orzov? Nice. Well, here we go. Almost all of these cards are from Ravnica Allegiance in our deck. We don't have, like, har hardly any cards that aren't from Ravnica Allegiance. Uh, let's get the... Here we go. Um, let's get Grixis Control up and going for the YouTube channel. Priest of the Forgotten Gods is so good here. <laughs> so good. We got another donation. All right, we have a, a song request. Let's see if I can get to this. For Afterlife. Thanks, or thanks, Avenger. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna try to find this on Spotify because of how I have my audio set up now with like the YouTube channel and everything. All right, and looks like we found it. Crackling Drake, huh? Ooh. Yeah, priest kills does kill the drakes really good. Um, if they don't they don't kill the priest. All right, here's our song request. All right, so we're playing against drakes, mortifies, duress, um, contempt. Those all seem like pretty reasonable cards. Is there anything that's not so good against Drakes? Yeah, they're going to side in a bunch of creature removal, right? Bunch of sweepers. I mean, cards like Orzhov Enforcer and Imperious Oligarch are not good unless we have Priests of the Forgotten Gods in play, basically.
I'm gonna take out the vindictive vampires since we're adding upping our curve a little bit. And then ministrant. I don't think I want the immortal sun. Should the Novas be Kaya's Wraths? It's a good question. Kaya's Wrath is certainly better if you only want to destroy creatures. The only reason to play Nova over... Whoa! They're running out... I guess I ran out of time? I thought I still had, like, 20 seconds. Sorry, the only reason to play Nova over Kaya's Wrath is the ability to destroy all artifacts and enchantments, which can be uh, pretty important against... Um, Uh, maybe a deck like uh, Nexus, where they're playing like Wilderness Reclamations and Search for Cantas. But I'm not even sure if that's really, really what you want to be doing anyway. I guess I ran out of time. Misjudged how much time I had. All right, Grixis control. I'm getting that the stuff for the YouTube channel up on Grixis control right now. Yeah, the gates decks could have like they can have like the eight eight as an artifact and uh, and then of course obviously guild summit for the enchantment. That is so cool. It's like the best part about playing Alenda is that really sweet um, rose that comes on screen. Well, our hand's a little better this time. See if we get to untap with Priest this time. to sack Alenda and Oligarch. It's really considered like memorial to glorying and everything, but we need um we need the the creature the flying creature tokens. That's a good card to draw. 
would have taken another land to an untapped land. You know, if Memorial Glory was an untapped land there, we would have been able to play the other Alenda, and that would have actually been awesome for us. Having another Alenda in and just growing the Alenda here. That was honestly what we needed was an untapped land. Because the Alenda would be... Gosh, Alenda would be huge right now. Hmm. Hey, Daniel from Brazil. We need that on top land last turn. Because, like, imagine if this Alenda was a 7 7 lifelinker, like this turn that was, like, attacking. It would have been really big. So, just having Memorial to Glory in our deck costs us this game. I, I feel like. I feel like we could have got there if we didn't have. If we would have been able to cast a Lenda last turn, if we didn't have like the untapped land. It's a good point. I gotta gotta stay hydrated. All right, let's get the mortal mortal sun contempt back in. Vindictive ministrant. Yeah, let's take out some Midnight Reapers. It's a good call. Maybe we just don't want Midnight Reaper. Yeah, right? Alenda should have reach. Yeah, vampires are can turn into bats and fly. I agree. Every vampire should have reach. Hands not so good. Uh, Tesa is a human advisor. So at least we're keeping our opponent from uh, having a bunch of charter courses. And now we can draw some kind of three drop. Seraph's a good draw. Good draw. I'll take it. Yo, 
Yeah, whatever their their cards were on top, they liked them because they they kept both on top with the discovery. I'm playing Tasa before Seraph of the Scales because if my opponent has Lava Coil in hand, um, I'd rather them Lava Coil the Tasa than the than the Seraph. So maybe maybe if they have Lava Coil, they'll they'll just use it on the Tasa here. Yeah, there's definitely times where you sideboard zero cards. Yeah, that can happen. Wasn't really expecting that one. Uh, in paper, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'll definitely... Definitely do that sometimes of put in put in cyborg cards and then take them back out. Absolutely. Especially if I'm playing like between game two and game three, let's say I cut one let's say I cut like one Midnight Reaper from the deck. And then in game three I will, like, take the Midnight Reaper, like, if I don't want to, if I want to keep that the same and change it, I'll take that Midnight Reaper from my sideboard and put it back in and make sure to take, and take out a different Midnight Reaper and, you know, make it so it's not, you know, not like, I'm not making it like, I'm not being like, hey, I'm going to put this one card in and take this one out, but, you know, like, make it so it's very, so it's noticeable that I'm putting in a card and taking a card out kind of thing, and then... Even if it's uh, like the same card. I'm kind of waiting on the duress to to see like we have like all this extra mana. But basically, there's nothing really for me to duress right now. Um, I'm waiting on duress. Because it's possible our opponent just has a couple lands in hand. Um, like, you use Duress, like, proactively to, to protect, like, whatever spell. Like, I want to use Duress to protect whatever thing we're going to draw. So I might as well give my opponent a couple more draw steps to draw whatever, you know, like, the answer to my thing. And then Duress and try to take that answer away. Because their answer could be on top. Like, I'm... Like the only reason to cast duress now, um, in my opinion, the only reason is because of Niv Mizzet. That is the one reason. Like especially if they were a, a Niv Mizzet deck, I would, you know, would not want to cast it whatsoever. Now, but that's the one reason why I would consider casting it early. Just dead. Thirteen four. Just so ridiculous. Now I haven't been playing too much Vanifar recently. That's kind of how my day's kind of gone though. With our yeah, with our flood. This is just this is just what today's been going like. We haven't been drawing good cards in the late game. Cause remember, our, we've already sacrificed two lands, and we're we're playing 23 lands total. So that's nine out of 23. 
Just it's today. So the second game was really close, though. Um, I feel like if we didn't have Memorial to Glory, if we had an untapped land, we would have won the second game. So as you can tell, I just don't like tap lands. But the third, the third game, we just flooded out really bad. I mean, my duress, if my duresses were Midnight Reapers, maybe it would have been better. Like, maybe just bringing in duress was just a mistake. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, these decks don't have a card advantage. It's certainly true. Just guy. We don't need to draw any more lands. So if our if our deck can help us out here, I'd like to draw zero lands the rest of the game, please. Actually, none of these cards are very good. It's pretty unfortunate. This is the kind of matchup that should get better sideboarding whenever we're bringing in our Immortal Sons and everything. I know my yeah, we'll have our, our duress is immortal sons. We need to move quickly. Hey Dirk. Enough. Yeah, that's a supple a supplemental set. Supplemental sets you know what? Uh, do I'm that. So yeah, it's, it's not like one of the the main four sets for the year. There's there's just a, a new um new different set that's not part of standard. Oh, I didn't know about that. That it's gonna have no modern reprints. I didn't know about that. That's different. Keep up the pace.
Tesa um, doubles your afterlife triggers. That's what it does. All right, so final payments are out. Tesa, Linda, and Vindictive Vampire are all not great. We need to cut down our, our fours. I'm keeping in all these twos and threes. Gosh, Priest of the Forgotten Gods is... It's not really worthwhile either, though. Um... I guess we're going to take out two of those. All right. J. Jack Jr. with a deck donation. All right. We'll get that deck up next. Here's a deck. Uh, let's see what I got. 30 seconds. Here's a deck I've wanted to see work. Hope you enjoy. All right. Dovin's Army. Nice. Here's the deck fanboy wants to check it out. 20 seconds. For these two cards. I'm playing a couple, like, so I was considering keeping in, um, the, the two mana one, two. I was considering keeping it in simply because of Lyra Dawnbringer. But I decided just to put a couple um, Mortifies in instead, because it's just Priest of the Forgotten Gods. It's just pretty hard to make Priest work in this kind of matchup. All right, so Cannonade and Binding. Can they turn some of our tokens into other tokens? Mortify is a good draw against Binding. Certainly, certainly glad I have Mortify in the deck right about now. No land still. That's all right. The Dovin's army. Are, are we playing Prime Blade? Do we have a Prime Blade in here? All right. Dr. Tobias with that Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much, Dr. Tobias. I really do appreciate that. So that keeps the hype going in the channel. For sub number 23 on the day. Go, Linda. Yeah, that Dusk Rose animation is awesome.
All right, bunch of crabby creatures. You can do it. Every problem has a solution. Oh, come on. I just want to peek. The weight is killing me. Hmm. Alright, what do we want to do here? Probably Tesa. Just want to attack them. No. Come on. So even if they have a wrath, uh, we'll get a bunch of creature tokens because of Tesa. Well, now not so much anymore. Well, let's see. Yeah, what bring in my other Morphi. <laughs> the dogs are busy watching you. <laughs> Nice. Um. You know what? Talk to my lab assistant if you want to rematch. All right, getting rid of that, that as Kanta. Don't want them just to have like the card advantage. Right? Cleansing Nova destroying Jamins. Our opponent did play Cleansing Nova last game. They could do it. I hope they don't have settle. This would presumably get rid of the Sensor Sabotage. Yeah. Uh, Desert X. Resubbing for the second month. Thanks for that continued support, Desert X. I do appreciate that. Tithe doesn't really stop Settle. Settle just costs six mana, which they, of course, have six mana. Oh, I, yeah, this is uh, Rise by 6 a.m. I just realized that we were just playing this album. Uh, we had a, a donation request a while ago, and I've just... And I guess I've just been playing this whole album. Haven't changed back to the regular playlist. Um, I really didn't want them to have that card. I was really hoping they didn't have that card. Yeah. 
Hey, Yager. Yeah, it is certainly good to be good to be back. Good to have power, electricity, all that kind of stuff. Need more mortifies. I can't play the cards in my hand because of Ixalan's binding. I can no longer stand by and hold that thought. Man, if I had Cleansing Nova, right? Cleansing Nova's in my sideboard. I wish. I have three no Ixalan's Bindings. Those would be awesome draw. Uh, I have I have some more Mortifies. I have... I think I have two more Mortifies in the deck right now. Or no, I have one more Mortify in the deck right now. So Mortify. I have a Contempt. Contempt would be a really good draw. Think you can beat me? Ixalan's Binding would be You're like my best draw. Or not Ixalan's Binding, sorry. Immortal Sun. The Immortal Sun. We have three The Immortal Suns. That's the card I'm talking about. Yeah, we have we have three immortal suns in our deck. We haven't seen one yet. Let's skip to the good part. I think we may have needed it that previous turn there. Hope we get something good. At this point our opponent likely has a um, a counter spell. Our opponent's all about the exile, which is not good for us being an afterlife deck. Um, you know, like these days there's just so many like cast downs everybody's playing, but not our opponent. They're just a bunch of bunch of lava coils. And bindings. So we have like this turn for the Immortal Sun. Otherwise, they'll tef Teferi Emblem. Hurry. So we have to have them not... They can't have a... We have to not only draw a Mortal Sun, but then they can't have a Counterspell. Well, let's see what the wind blows in. It's certainly possible they only have two cards. It's possible they don't have a, a counter spell. We have three Immortal Suns. It's a lot of them. We haven't seen one in the top 25. Maybe that's one? No. Hey, QQ Image. It's good to be back. Except we're just getting beat up real bad with all of our decks today. Alright, so we went 0 2 with Orzhov Afterlife. Um. But with this being a donation deck that, you know, somebody donated to see, I don't want to just play two matches uh, for a donation deck. So 
we're going to go ahead and run it back, start a new league, and try it again at, oh no, I want to do it, yeah, I want to play, you know, I want to win at least one or, or try two, two leagues if we don't win a match with the donation deck. Uh, yes, this is not a tier one deck. Jack just donated for Dovin's army. We'll have that deck up after this. It's all my mythics. Getting that deck up on Stream Decker right now. So we're playing against a mill deck, huh? Wall of Lost Thoughts and Thought Collapse. Can our deck get us some spells? Nope. That's certainly a good time to have Memorial of Glory in the deck, though. Sphinx's Tutelage was a really good card. Yeah, that was a good card. Yeah, we lost to Jeskai Control. And so we went 0-2 the, the previous league, and so restarting it. Didn't want to just play that. Didn't want to just play two matches. Yeah, never drew an immortal sun in our like in the twenty six cards we drew. We didn't see one, which would have been really nice. Yeah, I, I usually try to restart if the deck goes out too. I don't I don't know if I say always because I don't know if I always have, but yeah, I, I like playing more than just two matches, you know, for a for a donation. Especially a deck that's a little different like this. That's like playing a lot of different cards. Um, you know, a lot better chance that I'm restarting it than. Um, you know, like a, a Sultai deck that goes O2, for example. All right, Priest. We need to get through. We need some tokens.
Eight is a lot of tokens. It is a lot of tokens. Hope our opponent doesn't have wrath effects. Being that they do, like, at least Ministrants will. We'll make some new tokens for us. Alright, we're at 31 cards in library. Our opponent has hit all spells, like, basically every single time with this, with this Psychic Corrosion. They've milled one total land. <laughs> and so then we get to draw all the lands. Ah, they milled a second land. That's just how our, our, yeah, just one land milled in in those, like, first 20 mills. That's just how our, our day's been going, you know? Everything going wrong. There they go. They milled some lands now. Okay, as long as they do not have Settle the Wreckage. Settle the Wreckage is the only thing that saves them here. Well, besides Fog Effects. Um, Cleansing Nova, we're good. We're good against Cleansing Nova. Hooray! Vindictive Vampire! Way to do your thing. Oh yeah, the bounce effects, yeah. Like Rivers Rebuke, they could have had those. Alright, Duresses, Mortifies. I wonder if I want Cleansing Nova to destroy all, all artifacts and enchantments. Um, that doesn't really seem necessary. Take out Priest, Final Payment, and which of these do I want to take out? A couple of Tesas. Maybe one Alenda, one Tesa. No, I like Alenda. Wait, so that's 59. I got to put something back in. Uh, would, would I have attacked, like, if they would have just passed turn there, would I have attacked with six creatures? Into Settle. Depends on exactly where my library was. I think that's the big thing, is is probably, like, where, the, where my library was. Thanks, Hogs. No, I did not have any. I did not have good days off. It was um, so the last three days my electricity was out, so I didn't get to you know you know do very much. It was just like real cold and you know three days like without a shower. It was just it wasn't wasn't very good. I haven't had a last. I haven't had a good last few days. So. Yeah, so that, that happened, but I'm back, and yeah.
Yeah, no, it wasn't on vacation. Like I was, like I was planning to to stream like a twelve hour stream on Monday. So you know, went back to to today. But no, it's been a rough few days. All right, so playing the enforcer because it has death touch. Which is why I led with it. Uh, I, d I don't know. The electric company just took that long to fix it. There was just a windstorm uh, Sunday night, and I live up. I live up in the up in the mountains, and so I'm like, I guess I'm like last priority. It just takes them a long time to to fix the power whenever it goes out. And um, even though like like the city of Roanoke, like they had everybody had power and everything, but it took my house a long time. So it sucks, but I got the generator working. So uh, the second and third day, I had the generator working um, during the day to just keep the it, it, the generator just kept the fridge going. So that's good. Didn't have like the spoiled food um, and one outlet next to the fridge uh, as well. And so I could like you know have my phone charger in there to charge my phone. Take vengeance. It's rude. So this is the second time this winter because it happened also in November. For those of you that were watching the stream then, you may remember it early November. We had like a, a snowstorm that did the same thing and so I didn't have power then. But at least then it was just like, it was like 20 degrees. It was awful. This time it was like 50 degrees, which is still really cold, but it wasn't as bad. Uh, correct, yeah, Roanoke. I think it's the same Roanoke from American Horror, Horror Story, as far as I know. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm still planning on moving to Texas. Um, I'm thinking like June, June July. Uh, that's like my target time to be moving is like June or July. We moving back to the Dallas Metroplex. That's where I'm from. So yeah, I just went with a the vampire there, so they wrath. We got a bunch of triggers. Oh, you're in Fort Worth? Nice. Like, I'll, I'll probably be moving out a little bit, um, a little bit in the country. Because, you know, like, you know, don't make a ton for from streaming here. So, um, probably be moving out where it's a little bit cheaper to, to live. So, I may be moving, like, west or south of Fort Worth or north or west of Denton or something like that. Understand that question. Do you have the electric cables unearthly? I don't understand that question. Oh, thanks, Edivax. Thanks for uh, thanks for that Twitch Prime sub. I, I do appreciate that. Enjoy all the awesome emotes. That's sub number twenty-four on the day. One more, and then we'll be cracking open a pack. That's rude. Oh, okay, the, the cable's underground or above ground, gotcha. And I 
don't know the answer to that question. I'm not sure. I believe above ground. Hey, Mr. Previously. Well, I'm back. Back now. Um, not planning on any off days. In the future. It's okay. Yeah, no, I, I just didn't understand. All right, we beat Mill. One and zero. Um, put in the Discord link here too. That's if something happens like that. That's where I like. That's where I update and how like I when I was updating to say that I wasn't going to be streaming stuff. That's in the the Discord chat. Okay, where'd you come from? Where'd you come from, Hawkeye? Where'd you come from? Average day with our decks today. Oh yeah, Hawkeye does not does not like being in the car. He doesn't like being anywhere except for in the bedroom. In here, he's a big scaredy cat. Doesn't like the outside world. Thanks, Hogs. Oh. Um. Hmm. So we're... Yeah, so they block Midnight Reaper. We draw two, lose two. I could have attacked and, and only drawn one, lost one. But I, you know, like, we don't really have very much going on. I think the extra card's worth the, the extra life. <laughs> uh, you can't sub on mobile? unfortunate maybe try going through the the sub link maybe you go through like that link there so many burn spells double cast So the Oligarch has Vigilance. We kind of attack with everything. We still have a creature back to block. Just don't kill us, opponent. That doesn't kill us. Yeah, so if we, okay, so if we final payment the Ministrant, 
We kill a firebrand and we make four tokens. Probably worth it. Just conceded. They went down to one. Hey, Flips, you figured it out. Good job, Flips. Welcome. Oh, I should just kill my own creature. Okay. Flips. Sub so you can use your emote. Yeah. Alright, so yeah, Midnight Reaper not so good. Um a lot of our cards kinda not so good. Definitely want craving contempt. Guess we'll play a couple of duresses also, or like one duress. So I don't like these Mortifies. Chain Whirler certainly seems like a really difficult card to get through. Um, yeah, they could have just blocked and sacrificed. So I was thinking that they were going to be doing. Oh yeah, that's true. Mortify can take out the frenzies also. I don't think I really want those final payments. Our deck's kind of bad against Chain Whirler just in general. Oh well, I'm not gonna go duress heavy. Um, we'll see if it we'll see if it backfires against us. We had the one duress in could be the third mortify but i'm not just cutting a bunch of creatures just to throw in a bunch of duresses we're gonna try to go with the creatures just don't need another four drop even though seraph is better than alenda or vindictive vampire but just can't really have another four drop i like priest um You know, Priest can it certainly just eat a burn spell, you know, like a shock or whatever. But it at least kind of forces them to, to cast that. It could do some good work. Um, Mr. Previously, I would say neither of those are really true. Yes, this is this deck is definitely worse than uh, the best decks in the format. I guess that's it is worse than the best decks in the format, but not necessarily way worse. Hmm. Uh, exclamation point playlist. Uh, 
So if they firebrand Alenda, that's not gonna work because Alenda's gonna gain a counter. Which, that's what they did. That doesn't work. So, so that works out pretty well for us. Yeah, there was an attempt. I didn't want to use the priest yet, but you know, they forced our hand with that skewer. You don't get to use the mana. Pretty good turn for them. What? So electrostatic fields are going to be annoying. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do when Hawkeye gets in like the, the play mood that wants to start nipping at me and stuff. I just give him to, like the pen in front of his face. Glad to have you here. Yep, everything's good. Everything's good. I uh, just had the um, just had a problems with electricity the last three days. My power was out. Hmm. I guess I could attack for one in the air. Yeah, it's a big yeah, big hit on the income, but yeah, we're back at it now, so I'm I'm still really planning on trying to stream a lot to make up for it. So they could be at nine. I could have attacked for one in the air there. All right, good job, Vindictive Vampire. Mono. Wow, we beat Mono Red. All right, during that last um, 
during that last match, we got enough subs to get our pack goal. So let's go crack a pack. And Marsham with the sub. Also, welcome, Marsham. Sub number 26 on the day. MTG bots a little ahead. They double counted some. All right, so we just need to reset that league. Now we're 2-0. All right, let's crack our pack. Come on, Mythic. Ah, uh, 20 gems. Not Mythic. So, we've seen how good Priest of the Forgotten Gods is, like that last game. It certainly did a whole lot for us. Here we go. Orzov Afterlife, you can do it. Okay. Certainly keepable hand. Yeah, my that is true that my opponent didn't draw enough burn spells. Because, uh, yeah, we, we can't interact with the burn spells. We can only interact with the creatures. Uh, with Kai as a win con, I, I haven't tried... No, I guess I have not tried an Orzhov control deck with Kaya as the win con. Uh, I've played Kaya in a few different decks and everything, but not specifically that. ACO. Hero of Precinct 1. Alright, Tithe or Enforcer? Let's go Tithe. Just having the one white mana. I could see that I could see white mana being a bottleneck for us. In the future. Yeah, five win dream still alive. Nice. Get some divine visitations in there. I can respect it. So I think our opponent is uh, a Bant Tokens deck. Oh man, should have played Tesa first. I was thinking that my opponent was not going to block. Dude, 5-0 would be pretty sweet this time. Yeah, they get, they're going to have a lot of tokens. But so are we. Try to block these enforcers eventually. Deputy. That's really bad.
Oh, Alenda. Oh, Alenda's nice. Please don't kill my Alenda opponent. Don't have another deputy. Right? Deputy would be great for us. I can't really afford to play Midnight Reaper, unfortunately. Uh, Tesa says they double... All my creatures double trigger. Like, each creature that dies, I lose two. Life, that is. So what does Memorial of Glory cost? Four? So yeah, we, we get to play Priest and have Memorial up. I think our opponent could be dead. Especially just not blocking. Yeah, they're kind of dead. Vindictive Vampire kills them. Cleansing Nova. Um... We're not really in an aggressive deck. Like, the formation is, like, a card you want in an aggressive deck when you're, like, a, you know, it attacking for lethal kind of thing. Midnight Reaper is a, a card that gains you a lot of card advantage, and so we want we want card advantage in that slot. Like, this is a deck that's built to, that the goal is to outlast other decks. Reaper does kill us qu quite a bit. Our Reaper earlier was, was pretty good, though. Is Vigilance better than during your turn spells cost more? I'm just going to put in a couple uh, Cleansing Novas over to the 2-1 Vigilances. I don't think I really want, like, Mortifies and stuff like that in this kind of matchup. I don't like having, you know, 3-4 drops in my 2-mana hand, though. Like, this... I'll be pretty surprised if we win this game. Well, it's not necessarily. Our opponent's at 6 cards as well. Do you think it would be too relevant on the format to have a reprint of Elvish Visionary? No, I mean, I think it would be perfectly fine. I, it would pro it would most likely see some play, but I don't think it would be 
you know, like setting the world on fire. I don't think it would like change the format necessarily a ton. Uh, Elves is already pretty close to being, you know, like playable and stuff, and it would certainly help out Elves. Did not get to our fourth land, but we did draw two more four drops. So there's that. Like we already, like the, the vampire is basically all this visionary. You just lose one life. Like it's, it's not really that different. It's, you know, pretty similar of a card. Like obviously, obviously Elvish Visionary is better. You don't lose the life, but it's not, you know, substantially better. Why are they shocking? Does that settle the wreckage? No, Visionary is just a 1-1. One, one. It's a 2-mana 1-1. One, one. I mean, I think if it's March, they just do it on their turn because of Tithe Taker. I think Settle the Wreckage is like the only thing that's reasonable. You know, that or like uh, Deploy. Like Deploy is reasonable. was March. I just wanted to make their Shauna bigger at instant speed, I suppose. That's still just the deputy taking out the one card, the one ministrant. Alright, we have more four mana cards where that comes from. Don't cuss. I know that's annoying. To get disdainful struck like that, but you know, don't don't swear though. hand has been turning out pretty good. Yep. March the Multitudes. Good card. Game three. So they're playing Disdainful Stroke. Don't know if I need to do anything different. I need to just kind of not draw all of my top ends. Priest is not so good against tokens, I suppose. If 
I take those out. Put in two to rest. One Mortify, and one of these oligarchs back in. Yeah, Kai's Wrath would be good in the deck, I think. We have Cleansing Nova in here, but yeah, it certainly seems like Kai's Wrath is probably better. Like, in unless for some reason we really need to destroy like artifacts and enchantments. Um, but yeah, the Wrath effects uh, definitely, definitely good. All right, well, we have four of like the exact same card in our opener. Start with the Oligarch. And then I'm going Tithe Taker. I'm not gonna let. I'm not gonna play another Oligarch because of Deputy of Detention. Don't want to play two of the same. Two one. I, mean, I don't know. Like last game, we we never got above four mana, so I don't know what. Like I I don't think. Like, Ethereal Absolution wouldn't have done anything the last game. Uh, tokens is a pretty fast and explosive deck. All they need is a Tristanium play, also. I don't know. Six mana is a lot. It's a little under unreliable. I want them to block Tithe Takers instead of Oligarchs. This would be a good time for any of our, you know, this would have been a good turn for any of our four mana cards. All of our four mana cards would have been great here. Uh, you know, the last game was the game that we had all the four mana cards, not this game. Every single four mana card would have been a, a good play that last turn. plan is just a deputy detention again. Dang it. Bleh. Yeah, Deputy has been incredible against us.
We've seen Disdainful Stroke from them. It's pretty likely that they had that there. Other option is just is to kind of wait, but I really know, like, basically would be waiting for like us drawing duress or them tapping out. They don't have to tap out like, you know, they can with two tithe takers in play. They could, you know, they don't, they don't have to like tap out completely. Sample strokes have just killed us. All three, I mean, these last two games, these sample strokes have been very good. We still have Cleansing Nova, we could draw. Yeah, Deputy wasn't dying. I don't know why I was thinking Deputy was dying. Deputy wasn't even dying. So yeah, that was just not a good block. I don't know. That was not a good... Yeah. No, we didn't have the... We didn't have the mana to activate Memorial. By playing that land. I don't think. I don't think we had four extra plus Memorial. I don't think we had... We would have had five mana. Hey, kitties. Thanks for that resub there. Thanks so much, kitties. Alright, so we're two and one. Let's, uh... Try fighting back. We we got to our four mana cards, but we just got a little... Got to them a little late. By the time we dr started drawing our four mana cards, our opponent had the mana to... They were able to keep up, um... Disdainful stroke through like double tithe taker by that point. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep, we just played against the Bant deck. Good game. All right, let's see. Let's go. Go with the priest. The only thing that plays like radical idea is probably like Drake's, right? It's the only thing I'm thinking of. Yeah, it's probably Drake's. Yeah, good games, Bach. Hmm. I'm gonna play Midnight Reaper as like another. So basically, Priest of the Forgotten Gods is a really good card against Drakes. Um. So I'm playing the Midnight Reaper as like another card to have as like a, a good a good card to um, for the opponent to want to kill. Like if they have a removal spell, maybe they kill the Midnight Reaper instead of the Priest, kind of thing. 
If I play Tesa and sack Tesa, we draw four cards. Um, go to 16, draw four. If I play Ministrant, we draw two. Uh, and I have two 1-1s one left over. Um... Hmm. Oh, tough call. I hope I draw something to play here. Yeah, I had already played a land the last turn. We were on the draw. Put him down to nine. Good. I didn't really want to play final payment here because of spell pierce also. Um you know, Electromancer deck may not be playing spell pierce and dive down and things like that. Uh when you're trying to play Arc Light Phoenix. Uh, but I still wanted like something else to play. Yeah, Priest of the Forgotten Gods is, is awesome when it goes unchecked. didn't kill priest See if we find something to do with the the uh, two black mana here. Nope. Is that game? All right. Good job, priest. Surprisingly, I guess they want they need to shock the other thing. I suppose. Um, this is kind of a tough deck to sideboard against. Drake's here. Um, could see Cleansing Nova being pretty good. But with them being 
an Arclight Phoenix deck. Kind of want Contempt more. Maybe I just play like Craving, Contempt. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about Duress. We tr we played Duress last time, and it didn't seem like it was worth it. Their spells are just like some card draw spells. Yeah, you know, like last time, you know, we dressed away. We had two duress in the opener. We dressed away double. Uh, uh, two of the draw two discard a card, two charter courses, and then we just drew a duress later that was dead. I think I kind of want to just keep the creatures, keep the pressure on. What mortify? Taking out Tesa and Alenda, a Midnight Reaper, and an Imperious Oligarch. Ah, uh, it's just yeah. There you go. There's the song. Okay, so we have something to do on turn two and turn three, which is why I'm keeping the hand. They're not, it's not like our best hand or anything like that, but being on the draw, there we go, means that we'll have some time to draw into some other spells as well. I like just having, having some lands, having, you know, good lands here and then uh, a good couple early turns and then kind of relying on our deck to help us after that. I think that's better than a six card hand. Answers. Yep, they actually shocked the Priest of the Forgotten Gods this time, unfortunately for us. Hey, Radicus! Welcome back! Thanks for keeping up with that six month streak. Sub number 28 of the day. Thanks, Waticus. Hmm. Attack. Maybe our opponent has the Stainful Stroke in their hand as well as our last opponent. Uh-oh. That thing's pretty big. Play Tithe Taker or Crack Memorial to Folly. Guess he uses my mana better to Crack Memorial to Folly. And in case we draw a Tesa, Tesa makes the tokens have lifelink. 
Could certainly be relevant. I didn't say memorial. What what did I say? Is that not what I said? Memorial to glory? Oh, I said folly. Oh. Alright, wrong memorial. Maybe I need those things. Vindictive vampire? Yeah, those can go. Okay. So I just want to let you all know, um, after, after this match, <clears throat> I'm going to be doing a... I'm going to be doing the... Um, Uh, the bounty. I have a, a bounty to um, unbox a Dollar Shave Club kit f for a few minutes. Um, so please stick around while we talk again about Dollar Shave Club. Did it? Uh, we had a, a clip to play last time I was streaming. I'd really appreciate if y'all stay around because. Um, yeah, so it's it's a sponsored thing, but I need 500 people in here. Um, if I don't have 500 viewers, then I don't get paid at all. So really hope that y'all don't don't leave during that. Um, I would appreciate it. So you know we're at 600 right now. Um, you know I get like a proportional amount of money. But with my stream, I have to have at least 500 viewers. So I've been been waiting throughout the day because we haven't had 500 viewers in today. Too much. So I've been waiting. So much removal. I was hoping when they use the two lava coils that we're gonna be good. All right, can we draw a land so we can mortify that thing? Nope. Thanks, hey Doc. No, I haven't seen anything from Modern Horizons. I've been here streaming all day, so I haven't seen anything from it. Hey, Gatsby. Gatsby, I saw your message. Do you want me to change your deck? Ah, new Sarah Planeswalker. Gotcha. Sarah the Benevolent. Two white, white, four mana, plus two creatures you control with flying game, plus one, plus one until end of turn. Minus three, create a four, four white angel token with flying and vigilance. And then minus six, you get an emblem with, if you control a creature, damage that would reduce your life total to less than one, reduces it to one instead. So worship for an emblem. Well, this is a... This is like a modern product. The card's going to see zero modern play. Compared to like the other good planeswalkers you have in modern. Even at like the two white white mana cost.
But yeah, Commander is also it's good. Good there. Yeah, I like Commander. Yeah, I like it for Commander. But, it's, you know, it's weird that it's in, like, a, you know, a specific, like, a modern product. Specifically when it's not going to be good enough for modern. Yeah, modern is, is a very strong power level. Hey, Mr. Previously, thank you so much for that sub with the tier two sub. Welcome. Hmm. Second Phoenix. So killing Goblin Electromancer would be a lot better for me than killing um, Arclight Phoenix. But I went with the Arclight Phoenix. Basically because because um, I kind of had to, you know, like I just kind of had to save the life. Yeah, second Phoenix is going to be really good against us. The combination of a bunch of lava coils and then arc light phoenixes to outrace our creatures. Pretty good. So, you got us, Phoenix. Good job. Alright, so we went 2 2 with our second time after going the 0 2. You know, definitely did better there. Um. But yeah, you know, like this this isn't like the the best deck in the format or anything like that. It's you know, it's a, it's definitely a synergistic deck whenever things get going. It it can work pretty well, but we don't have very good interaction because we're such a synergy ridden deck. You know, there's only two final payments for like targeted removal in the main deck, for example. Um and so that then we have a, a few pieces of interaction here in the sideboard, but we're like really relying on drawing those. Um, so it's kind of tough. So yeah, if you're watching this um, later on on YouTube, uh, one, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you for the next video.